I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with Daryl. Daryl, your last name? Adam. Adam. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so much. Let me grab the camera. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Carla. And let me have you come on up for a second. What do we have here today? It's a 1969 De Tomaso Mangusta. A De Tomaso Mangusta. And you see the plate only 401. Yeah, they made 401. There were 400 cars like this, and then one that had a uh, the top was chopped off to make a target, which is rather an unfortunate looking thing. So they only made one of them. And you can see all the venting here in the back that we have because the engine's back here. Show us, Daryl, the uniqueness of how you get towards that. Let me just take a quick look at that. That's a little different. And we've got a... So it's a 302 uh, small block Ford with a uh, ZF transaxle. It's basically the same drivetrain that was on the uh, GT40 race car. The same drive. Gas goes in here? This is the, the, the gas tank is on this side to kind of help counterbalance the okay. weight of the driver. Where's supposedly. the gas go in? Right here. This oh, is it, is, it does yeah. go there. So you open yeah. that up and that goes yep. in there. Got it. That's it. And let's take a look at that from the back for just a second. You don't usually see them open like that. No, the, okay. when both sides are up, it's pretty good. Yeah, let's go. Let's 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 pop the other side. Usually we'd start in the front, but we're fine doing this. The battery the back. And then we've got the uh, Shelby 302. So it's not just a regular 302. Well, what happens? This is what? glass right here. Yeah, that's glass. You can see my hand so saying that. It's fairly quiet, but uh, the, the cars came with a, a, a rather anemic 302 uh, from a Ford Fairlane motor uh, car. So the original owners tended to do things to hop them up, give them more horsepower. Okay. The original owner of this car was a young aerospace engineer, and he put a different cam in it and did some things with the valve. So that's okay. where the Shelby head uh, valve covers came from. And we can see the mufflers down there. Let's shut this. How long were you looking for this, Daryl? Uh, once I decided I wanted to get one, it took me almost two years. Two years. And about how many of these did you look at before you? I looked at 23, you... believe it or not. 23. Michael Jordan. All right. We're in the Chicagoland area, number 23. Okay. And uh, you can see the aluminum kind of giving it some air deflection, as you can see in the, the back here. It doesn't really show you the engine. Let's take a look at the interior. And how did you finally, when you were looking at 23 of them, I, I'm going to let you open okay. that. How did you determine this was the one? Well, I had almost given up because all the cars I looked at were in terrible condition or they'd been improperly restored and they were not like the originals that I had seen when I went to the factory in 1970. But uh, at, at the very end of my search, I ran across a gentleman who was retiring and selling his, uh, selling his cars. And he had owned this car since 1974. So I'm basically only about the third person to drive the car. Wow. What is it like driving this? It's very, it's, it's comfortable and it's, uh, it's fairly quiet. It doesn't handle really uh, terrifically because of the way the chassis was designed. That was one of its drawbacks. The chassis tends to flex. Okay. So you don't want to drive it like real aggressively, but for cruising around, it's perfectly fine. So is it a little, little go-kart like? I mean, you've got- It is, okay. it is. Let's take this a look. This was one of the very first cars that was uh, mid-engine. Let's move back and get an overall shot of the side. We've got the sun hitting it perfectly. This was designed by a gentleman named Giorgetto Giugiaro. It was a striking car. It was uh, designed in 1966. And you can imagine this part next to a 1966 Ford or Chevy <laughs> was rather... <laughs> it's like it was from another planet. I, I really can't imagine that because it's... It's sitting next to some supercars here today and it just stands out. The wonderful mirror on the dash. And the uh, rims there. Sure. Let's take a look at the front. Yeah. Daryl, it's got a uh, it's got a uh, wonderful front end. I love the little spoiler at the bottom of it too. That yeah, this sucks was, the air. Uh, the car, when it was designed as a show car, was completely illegal for the United States market. The car is too low, 
the headlights are too low. There are just all kinds of things that were illegal about it. So in order to, to sell them in the United States, they had to get a one-time exemption. So they, they could only build 500 of them. So it was essentially an automatic collectible right out of the box. Right out of the box. Well, Daryl, let me have you stand next to your car. Daryl, thanks for being on my car story. Yeah.